God's end time plan for the nations. That's the title of this discourse. Welcome to the Apocalypse. In this video, I'm going to share briefly with you concerning the mind of God about your country, especially if you are from Africa. This is a very important video you must watch. Does God have plan for the country? Look at the way the country is going. The country isn't getting better at all. It's going from bad to worst. And it's not only limited to the African countries. It's also somehow um, applicable. The situation is applicable to other countries of the world. But uh, it's worse in Africa. African situation, the African situation is tragic. But in this video, it's going, this video is going to educate you on the spiritual side of things, the political side of things, and our responsibility as citizens. So please watch it to the end. It's a short video. Now, God created the nations. You know, God is the architect of the, uh, of, uh, the countries. He's the one that had the idea as the eternal creator himself. So, he created uh, the idea of having a country. Or who created the idea of having a country? God did that. How? He first, he first created a man and a woman called Adam and Eve. And from creating those first people, he automatically formed a family. Those two people formed family. From families, we now have communities. From communities, we now have societies, which of course is a result of nations, having countries, nations. So you can see how, the, how your country come about. It's directly, it's directly an, an, a program, a brainchild of God himself. No politician created the country. It, the country is not a political ideology. It's an is, 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 is eternal plan. It came as a result of the eternal plan of God. So I'm going to show you in this video. Now, you remember that God told Adam, I've given you the dominion of the entire world, of the nations. I've given you the power to dominate on earth, to rule. So governance was given to man by God. Governance. But unfortunately, as you know it in Genesis, the devil came and took away that authority through what we call usurpation. He took it by trickery because he came by trick and collected that dominion. As a result of that, Satan now had a legal ground to control, be in lordship in different societies of human being, in nations, and even in the whole fabric of society, Satan now wields a legal authority. Legal authority means that it's an authority that is, he, he can be defended because he collected it legally. He, he, he didn't take it by force. He took it by trickery. Adam willingly handed it to him. If you look at the temptation in Matthew chapter 4, in Matthew chapter 4, Satan made that very clear to Jesus. He told Jesus, the kingdoms of this world, including your country, Satan told Jesus that they belong to him and that he has the power and the legal right to give it to whoever he wants. Jesus never contested that, mind you, if you have read that scripture. 
He never contested or argued with Satan. He knew Satan was actually making some sense. But Jesus used the scripture to defend his faith and to overcome Satan. But look at that statement that he will give it, he will give the kingdom of the world to whoever he wants. That if Jesus could just briefly bow down to worship him, he will hand over the powers, the power to rule in the kingdoms to him. Of course, Satan knows that that power is temporary. But for the fleeting moments, he wants to enjoy it to the fullest. And that's what your country is suffering. That's what every country is suffering. The influence of Satan, the devil, in government. I'm going to show you. Follow me. It's a short video. Within 10 minutes, I'm through. Now, politics, is politics a creation of God or of man? Politics was, politics came about as a necessity in a growing society because men in their large number began to think about leadership and how do we harness, put our interest, you know, Put our resources together for the common good of others. That's how politics came about. Those of you who know Politics 101, you know that uh, politics was actually developed in Greece. I hope you know that historically. So, and it kept developing. That's a democracy now, the, the, the Greek democracy. And it continued like that. But now, it seems as if Men, men, many countries of the world are practicing democracy that is handed to them by Europeans. But I'm going to show you that in the politics, whatever political, uh, political uh, title is given, whether oligarchy, oligarchy or democracy, fascism, whatever, there are many forms of uh, government. But all of them have failed over time. If you, are, if you are familiar with history, you will know that many of them failed woefully. Communism brought massive death, hunger to the people of the world. Example, look at the, um, what led to the, uh, uh, the war in the Indochina that Americans fought the Vietnam War. It's communism. Look at the number of look at the number of people that died by communism. Did it profit them? I'm showing you now the hand of Satan in world politics. Look at the millions that died in communism under that form of government. Look at the hunger. Look at in China. Is it China Mao? Look at is it Millions of people died from hunger under that particular government. Go and check your history. The havoc communism did to society is, you, you can't talk it here. Well, if, I, if I reveal it here, you'll be shedding tears. Is it the one of Joseph Stalin, whereby he, he caused massive death through hunger by withholding food, taking away resources, from Ukrainians who died in their thousands from hunger, starvation. Is it the many countrymen, professors, you know, the elites that he captured and murdered under his communism ideology or communist ideology? That's a form of government. I'm showing you the control of Satan in world government. That's why you are having the problem you are having in your country. Many of you don't look at the spiritual side of things. And that's why you are very, many people are very confused because they jettison the spiritual aspect of things. Nothing happens without a spiritual input. The spiritual controls the physical. Do, do I even begin? That's communism. I can't even exhaust the evil that the communist atheists committed in history. 
the world is the world has, the earth has drunk the many blood they shed under their different government am i going to even tell you about the havoc militarism perpetrated in history military government around the world <laughs> in fact if i start it that's a story for another day now the one you have, the system of government you are familiar with that most of you have been praising as is the best form of government democracy many of you didn't know that the europeans gave you democracy in africa to control your resources oh you're not a good history student please go and read the book go and read the book nigeria and uh his her british husband it's online go and read it many of you don't know that they brought democracy to you to control your psychology to control your resources and everything about you. You, are, you many of you Africans are under complete control and this control is not close control it's remote control remote very far away those who are ruling you are ruling you and they are ruling you by proxy proxy meaning that they have your African leaders in your country that they are controlling that's the government that is operating under democracy. And I'm going to show you the satanic aspect of it. We're talking about, about eschatology here. And you know, God has helped us to understand these, these revelations, these mysteries. Continue. Let's go on. And so, democracy, Abi, we say is the finest system of government. Now, over the years, we can't even talk about the half form done in democracy. One of the earliest form of havoc in democracy that Satan is perpetrating or uh, has perpetrated in the past is through what we call dictatorship. Many of you know different dictators. You can mention Idi Amin. You can mention if you can mention Idi Amin. You can mention many of them. Their their lists are endless. So these days it seems as if in democracy. The dictatorship is now, you know, made in a beautiful way. It's no longer the killing and the oppression that are very evident that you see. It's now exploitation of resources to perpetuate you in hunger and poverty so that at the end of the day, your life and the life of your descendants will be made useless. You will not be able to be strong to fight back. Then you are brainwashed. That's a system. You see, every system of government has his has its own demon. And its own demon can be very, very devastating. Now look at the history of Francisco Masayas Nguma, who ruled Equatorial Guinea from 1968 to 1979. Have you read his story? Maybe use this weekend to read up his biography or watch some of his video on uh, YouTube. He committed atrocities. Killing ethnic groups, killing uh, uh, the elite, educated individuals, and everyone, anyone that speaks against his government. And at the end of the day, tens and thousands, tens of thousands were massacred. Eventually, met his waterloo when they judged him and executed him. When his cousin Todoro took power and brought him to justice and they executed him. Look at that. What, what, do, what would you say come into such a man to, to, murder, to murder his own people and to you know, show them wickedness? You know, within the short time he ruled, desire for power, that's one, you know, absolute power, corrupt absolutely, desire for inordinate wealth, wealth that even he will not be alive to spend now because his, his four generations cannot even finish it. That, that greed is not ordinary. That greed is always you know, motivated by demonic power. When a man will cut to himself, garner to himself the wealth of many generations in his country, 
and he does not have a single a, a, a single remorse a conscience that could tell him is enough now let these people let these people survive but something in him and that's the demon telling him it's not enough take as much as you can let them starve let them die if they eat and they school and they become better they will challenge you mess up their life so that they will always be slave in chains begging for the crumbs that fall from your table this is not god speaking whenever a leader has this kind of mentality that is the devil right there i'm showing you i'm showing you devil in world politics in fact i wish i had time if i take you through throughout today you might not want to go to work you might sit down and probably pray or cry to god you are hoping that things will get better please my dear stop hoping things don't get better until the people do the right thing until we do the right thing i'm not among those who hope that things will get better i'm among those who believe that we do the right thing to get things better that's my mentality right from childhood i don't believe that the country will get better by itself i believe that individuals have to stand up to do the right thing to get it better if they don't do it they can suffer for a thousand years and god is god won't be moved because god says i'll show you what is good to you oh man he said i've created everything i need to create the rest is left to you i'm not creating anymore that's what god says so please let's go on. so you can see that the evil the demonic influences in world government and yet does god hate politics god only hates wicked politics but politics as in itself is a machinery to bring about leadership god doesn't hate that but god hates the evil politics the europeans are playing it the africans are playing it why the europeans form of politics is the exploitative one where they give you democracy to control your resources and to rule over you i want to tell you that that um, that uh, is that exploitation that you saw in, in the slave trade has only taken a different dimension it has not ended but it has taken a new name bingo is being given a new name <laughs> Bingo has been given a new name, but it doesn't stop it from being the bingo that she is. That's a fact. That's a fact. So mo most of you are, are, are hoping under democracy. Actually, you are not practicing democracy in Africa. As someone who has seen life, I'm almost 60 years. I've seen things. I need to tell you the truth. You are not practicing democracy in Africa. Is resource control. The lords control your leaders. Your leaders control your resources. The ripple effect is what you are feeling: hunger, deprivation, lack of amenities, no hospital, no schools, and the rest. In fact, if I go on, you see, this is not this is not politics 101 or government 101 that you learn in school. What they are teaching you in school is not even a practicable thing. Is the fact I'm telling you in this video. That's the fact. That's the, you know, some things are learned in school. Some things, some theories are good for learning, but they are not practicable. <laughs> I've been in the education system, I know what I'm talking about. For 18 years, I've been in the education setting. You see? What we are, what, what we are discussing here are things that are working. How they have been working. You see, so that is how Satan has put his dirty fingers in politics. It's not that politics is evil in itself. It's the people who have embraced the wrong side of politics, that you call the dirty politics. For, this, for now, 
most of you in Africa are suffering the disease of exploitation. I'm not being cynical here. I'm being very factual. Now let's go on. I will end this video by talking about briefly, as I end it, what is then God's plan for change, to bring about your change. You see, God intends that there will be a strong institution. People are busy blaming the wrong persons. You are busy blaming church leaders, religious leaders. They did not build this for you. I pity you. You, you, don't, you are not talking from uh, with your understanding. You, you, blame will not, will not fix anything. God intends for you to have a good nation. You have to have institution. Institution is where individuals have imbibed the right culture, the right motives. They have imbibed, they have they are standing on justice and what is right. In spite of their political differences, religious differences, they put all those aside, they come together. They may not even be in the same geographical location. But you know we are on the internet now, we are in a global village, but they all share the same value. So these individuals who share this value, this kind of good value for nationhood, nation building, and stand by it, they are called institution. You don't have it in your country. In Nigeria, for instance, you don't have strong institution. What is operating in Nigeria is that system, that democrat, democratic oligarchy, oligarchy. Yes, that is it. Many of them don't know that they are practicing oligarchy where the king is Alpha and Omega. If the king comes out, everybody bows down and worships. And the king looks straight and sees another person's wife and says, Take her for me. <laughs> I love her. And that is the day the man's wife is taken away, and the guy will shout, and nobody will answer him. Say injustice! No, 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 go down, he will kill you. Let him go with you. That's the advice his African brothers will give him. Please let him go with your wife. Who save your life. You can see marry another. You see this scenario I'm painting. That is what is happening in African countries. You think you are practicing democracy? You are practicing oligarchy that is camouflage. You know, where you put it on the garment of democracy, but inside it is oligarchy. Where one man is Alpha and Omega, he bends the rule, and the rule has to bend. You, are, are you now? No, no, I know you did uh, democracy 101. Is that what democracy teaches? Answer my question Is your court functioning as it should? Is your systems functioning? Yes, that's oligarchy. That's oligarchy. Oligarchy you are practicing now. You say you are practicing democracy. It's where the, in the in the in the African oligarchy, the king may come and take resources to himself and take a whole vast of land and say it is now for the king. Nobody there contest it. If you do, you'll be, you'll be killed. Is that not the same thing that's happening to your resources? Look at, for instance, look at your oil. <laughs> Is it not the same thing? In fact, <laughs> I won't go much on, in this video. If God gives me grace, I may come with my truth. Now look at, look at it. God says for you to, to, to break free from this menace you find yourself, you got to have strong institution. Yes, not strong individuals. No, strong institution. I've already explained what institution is because I want to end that video now. Then, this institution is bound by righteousness. Proverbs say righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now, this um, strong institution, the uh, value is based on right, what is right, righteousness. And they don't consider ethnicity, political divide or whatever. They have same value. They may be in America, in Asia. In, these individuals may be scattered abroad, but they are connected because we are now connected by internet. They stand for their country and they push forward for change. That is what salvaged many nations in history. Strong institution. If you don't have it, you will continue to cry for the next 1,000 years. It's not a castle. That's reality. Then, God has placed the church to do, to do part of this work. 
You see, those of you who criticize, who don't know the function of the church, I'm going to teach you now. God did not ordain the church to primarily build industries, uh, contribute to economy, you know, become, take the place of your leaders, political leaders. No. Go and read your New Testament. The church's responsibility in nation building, as God has stated it, even in the end time, is to raise men and women who are mentored after him. That after right standing, it is this man they mentor that will now bear for political offices and that will now form strong institution. Church, this is your job. Oh. This is your job. Are you doing it? If bloggers are condemning you for this, I will support them because that's where the church has his job. Primary responsibility to nation building. You are the one that will mentor men and women who will imbibe the right values to form what we call strong institutions that will now bring about good leadership in the African countries. That's the job of the church. It's not, to, it's not only just to be doing noise of a crusade and miracle everywhere. Yes, that is the spiritual aspect is also there, but this is where they come into nation building. Is the church doing it? And then, to end it, it is the duty of the uh, citizens, therefore, to, you know, to stand and to stand for what is right, irrespective of the political divide, religious divide, and um, tribal divide. But in most African countries, like in Nigeria, they are too drunk with religious division, political division, ethnic division. The politicians, the exploiters know this thing. So anytime there is election, they play those cards and suddenly all of you are completely divided, polarized. And before you know it, a wrong person is imposed on you. That has been your story all the while because you are not united. But when you get education, enlightenment, enlightenment from a video like this, you begin to think right that ethnicity is not going to help you. It has it helped you? Has it helped you? Even if it's your man that is in government, if it's the wrong person, you will suffer. Am I lying? <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's your, from your tribe. Once it's the wrong person, the nation will suffer. That's why I say ethnicity has never helped anybody here. Religious differences, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, when it comes to nation building, you put that aside. Political divide, I'm from AYZ party, I'm from ABC party. When it comes to nation building, you put those things aside. You see, that is what has helped progressive nations. Go and find out. Go and find out progressive nation. They have been able to put those differences aside and have what to call strong institution that actually bring the right person round, round peg in a round hole, square peg in a square hole. If you get that done, your nation will work. You don't need long prayers. I'm telling you, your nation will just work. And I end it here. <laughs> I hope you have been challenged by this video. Give it a thumbs up and then share it for other brothers in Africa to see. This is God's mind. God bless you. My name is Festus.